In the last video, I covered the top 10 Intellivision games. In this video, I am going to cover the top 10 worst Intellivision games. This is the original OG generation of video games. This is even before the original Nintendo. Intellivision was released in 1979. The Intellivision was the middle child of the original Big Three. The Big Three being the Atari 2600, the Intellivision, and the ColecoVision. It had the second best graphical look compared to the ColecoVision, but better than the 2600. It still did sell better than the ColecoVision though, with over 3 million units sold compared to the Coleco's roughly 2 million units sold. Both of those were a fraction of the Atari 2600's over 30 million units sold though. Intellivision had a lot of good games, and it had a lot of bad games. Today we are going to explore the worst of the worst of the Intellivision library. I, the official man, bring you the top 10 worst in television games. Number 10, Pole Position. Pole Position itself is a decent, if dated, game. Pole Position is an early racing title released in 1982. The Intellivision port is a butchered mess and a pain to play. Making any sort of turn or even staying on the road is a lesson in frustration. The poor controls make avoiding other vehicles very difficult and painful to do. The scaling is also really bad. It really seems like this port was just tossed together on a drunken Sunday afternoon. If anything, this turd should be tossed in the garbage. Number 9. Kool-Aid Man. Wow, this game is bad. You play as two children who are on an epic mission to mix some Kool-Aid. However, all the components to make the coveted beverage are spread around the house. You must find all the things you need to make the Kool-Aid and bring it to the sink. You would think this would be an easy task, but it is not. Your house has been overrun by the terrible thirsties. The thirsties exist to spoil the fun of kids. Only Kool-Aid Man can stop the thirsties from their vile deeds. If one of the thirsties touches one of the kids, that kid is frozen. If both kids get touched twice, it's game over. The thirsties bounce around randomly, but if they get close to you, they will hone in and attack. This is just a headache to get through. There's even a time limit. The only early game with a time limit that doesn't suck is Pitfall. As a general rule, time limits suck. Unless it's something like a racing or a puzzle game, then it can work. When you get all of the stuff and bring it to the sink, the Kool-Aid Man appears. You must now hunt down and touch the thirsties because now you have the mighty power of Kool-Aid. You win the level once you destroy the two thirsties. This part doesn't suck as bad, but it's still not very good. This game was originally a mail away offer that you got when you sent in enough Kool-Aid labels. This game is bad and boring. Stay away. Number 8. Zaxxon. The original Zaxxon was a groundbreaking title for isometric perspective games. You fly a ship over fortress walls and under force fields. The isometric graphics gave a 3D effect that worked really well for this game. The Intellivision Zaxxon is a whole different story. The Intellivision couldn't handle the main hook of the game. The master use of isometric graphics is what Zaxxon is really all about. Gone are the original graphics, and presented as this flying straight on version. There is a color system in this version. Enemies of a particular color can only be destroyed if your altitude meter is of the same color. You can move up and down, and you do use altitude like the original, but the charm is all but destroyed. Zaxxon on the Intellivision can be shot out into space, but that could cause its own problems. What if aliens find and play it? They might take it as a sign of war. The insult of making them play in television Zaxxon could just be too horrible of a thing to take. Number 7. Donkey Kong. Okay, this is bad. This is really, really bad. Just look at this. This is the original Donkey Kong on the Intellivision. This is such a lazy, underhanded effort. The gameplay is pretty broken. The jumping is poor. There's no real force behind his jumps. Mario doesn't gain any real distance, and he also kind of slows down. Grabbing the hammers is also very difficult. You often have to try multiple times. It's just not responsive. It seems Intellivision itself wanted to distance itself from this game, as it doesn't work on the Intellivision 2. This game was made by Coleco. Coleco basically sabotaged it, as the version on the ColecoVision is 
so much better than this one. Looking at it like that, I guess Coleco did a good job in making a terrible version of this game for its competitors. This is of course a Nintendo game. This was before Nintendo brought out the NES. Number 6. Tron Solar Sailor. The top 10 in television games has Tron Deadly Discs, and the top worst in television games has Tron Solar Sailor. You need the IntelliVoice for this one. The IntelliVoice is a large cartridge that goes into the IntelliVision side slot. Games for the IntelliVoice plug into the right hand side of the module. Its function is to talk. Games could now have speech. Only 5 games support it. It pretty much flopped hard. The game will use the IntelliVoice to give you a code that you must remember or write down. There are enemies along the grid that will attack. They are stationary. Shooting at everything will drain your energy. You move along a grid looking for the correct sector. When you find the sector, you enter a code. Once you do this, the gameplay changes and you're going down a 3D tunnel and collecting the numbers to crack the code. This game is really annoying and the opposite of what games should be. Fun. Number 5. Sewer Sam. Sewer Sam has a neat 3D look that was pretty innovative for its time. In this game, you play as a guy named Sam. Sam spends most of his time in the sewers hunting bats, spiders, and alligators. He is also hunting submarines, which is really strange. You always find submarines in sewers, right? Well, for some reason, this sewer system has submarines and you have to find a rocket launcher to bring them down. Once you find and defeat three subs, the game loops back to the start like many games did back then. The rocket launcher is really tough to find and very random. This game really just feels very random and thrown together. The sewers go on for far too long and they get really monotonous and boring. This game really just pretty much sucks and should stay where it belongs, in the sewers. Number 4. Congo Bongo. Congo Bongo on the Intellivision is an experience you don't want to have. The game looks nice for an Intellivision game, but that's the only positive thing that can be said for this title. This is a 3D isometric title. Congo is an evil ape. The game starts off with you just relaxing in your tent, minding your own business. Along comes Congo the ape and he burns down your tent. There's no real reason for it, this ape is just a big jerk. You must now take revenge against this ape and throw him back into the Stone Age. Actually, this is an eye for an eye type thing. Your revenge is lighting Congo's foot on fire the way that he lit your tent. What kills this game is the controls. You have to be right on the mark. Pixel perfect everything. With the isometric perspective, that can be very, very hard. You must avoid Congo's coconuts as he throws them at you. You can also avoid falling off an edge and into the water. This game should stay in the jungle and not in your Intellivision. Number 3. NHL Hockey. Having the NHL license for this game is pretty perplexing. There's no detail in the players. The only way to tell your guys from the opponents is the players are a different color. The players are all one solid color and there's nothing else to tell them apart. Also, this game is really, really slow. Don't even bother to try and pass the puck. It won't work out well most likely. Getting a goal is pretty much impossible as well. The goalie blocks pretty much every shot. There's no real way to use skill in this trash heap of a game. You shoot and hope for the best. I think the best thing to do is grab a hockey stick and smash this until you get it into a shape of a hockey puck. Number 2. Boxing. This game looks nicer than the Atari version of boxing, but other than that, they are pretty crappy. Your fighter is a single color. You look blocky and pixelated, but you can tell that your character is human at least, although it does feel more like a bad match of Rock'em Sock'em robots. The controls are not the worst. Not great, but not the worst. The gameplay isn't very good. The animations are smooth, but the characters move very sluggish. There's an alright variety in the punches, but nothing feels satisfying in this game. A game like boxing needs more power than the Intellivision has to really make a go of it. Even the Nintendo wasn't ready for the sport. They just found a good workaround with the gameplay style of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out to take something that shouldn't have worked and make it work. Boxing never really worked in the 4-bit era of gaming, 
Maybe if they did a similar style as Punch-Out, it might have been better, but that never really happened. This game is two-player only. Good luck in getting someone to play this with. Now, let's take a look at some honorable mentions. Number 1. Auto Racing. This game looks like fun. A cool little micro machine or super sprint style game on the Intellivision. Don't be fooled, the game controls very poorly. The graphics are bad for the Intellivision and it's just so boring. This is a great game if you're an insomniac, as it will most likely put you to sleep if you aren't super aggravated over the controls. The scrolling is just really bad and distracts from the gameplay. A distraction from this gameplay should be welcome, but it's just crap distracting you with more crap. I've watched a few videos of people who are good at this, and they did seem like they were getting some enjoyment out of it. Maybe they were drunk. Maybe this game is so bad it's good with booze. I don't really want to test that out though. There's much better things to do like watching paint dry, or cutting the lawn with scissors.